Crocodile looks amazing, and it's a super slept on Pokemon. Stat-wise, it does have a solid base 117 attack, but that's really all it's got going for it. But it does have two options for insane abilities in Intimidate or Moxie to boost attack after each KO. We can run Bulk Up to set up attack and defense, and it has great offensive typing with Ground and Dark for stab earthquakes and knockoffs, but it also gets Scale Shot, which is a multi-hit dragon move that can max out at 125 power with the five hits. We can give him the loaded dice item to guarantee four to five hits, and also get the plus one to speed that Scale Shot gives to make Crocodile super fast. Terra Dragon can make this hit even harder, and with a speed boost paired with its Moxie ability, this thing can snowball super quickly to sweep. Crocodile is one of my favorite Gen 5 Pokemon, and it always just seems to provide more value than you would expect from its super low usage stats. If you're into some hidden gem Pokemon, you should probably hit that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, and you can be part of the journey. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Iron Treads. Kind of an expected lead here. Probably just going to be here for a Stealth Rock, potentially a Volt Switch Pivot. I decide to lead off with Pond. Talking James Pond. And I also know that since I could go for a nice little flip turn here... Cover for a switch, also get super effective damage, but as a lead Iron Treads is probably more than likely going to go for the Stealth Rock. So instead, I'm actually just going to go for the Taunt, and they turn out to go for the Turn 1 Terra. It's going to be the Grass Terra uh, to not take super effective damage from like a Snipe Shot, and with the Flower on its head, it handles the Inteleon a whole lot easier. But that's mostly fine. I just go ahead and wag my fingers, and nothing worse than a skinny lizard just taunting at you here. So they do actually end up going for that Stealth Rock. They can no longer set that up because of the taunt, and that works perfectly. So at this point, I figure this thing, unless it's running something like Terra Blast, it's likely not going to stay in. And I decide to just go for the flip turn. Going to cover for that switch and try to grab myself a nice little bit of momentum here, as they do end up bringing in the Galarian Slowking. So... The flip turn, while it's not going to do a whole lot, it does allow me now to bring in whatever I like against this thing. And it's looking like our main dude, the Crocodile, does have a solid matchup here. So, as I want to bring in the Crocodile, I also don't really want to try to set up too early. I know that they have threats in the back that can outspeed, potentially take attacks unless I'm fully set up here. So, as I don't really want to set up the Crocodile too early, a knockoff is a great spot here. It's going to do a lot of damage to a Glow King, but also uh, is going to bop whatever decides to switch in. They are going to end up switching, and they're going to go right back into the Iron Tread. So as this thing comes in, of course, uh, it is going to take an Earthquake easily, but the knockoff is actually going to get rid of the Rocky Helmet. Now, we've seen this thing with Rocky Helmet. It's a Stealth Rock lead, and that leads me to believe this thing is more passive than kind of an offensive threat. So I'm actually just going to go for the Bulk Up here. I'm mostly banking on the fact that they want to set up the Stealth Rock that they weren't able to earlier. Earlier, but also, uh, imagine this thing is more defensive and it's not going to be running a jolly, like a plus speed nature. So I figured I was going to be able to outspeed and a bulk up would allow me to at least take one attack. So they do go for the Stealth Rock, which is perfect. And at this point, we've kind of got the Crocodile in a spot that is feeling uh, pretty optimal. So I'm going to end up going ahead, committing the Dragon Terra, and it's time to go ahead and launch some scales out here. As they're going to end up switching out, and they're going to bring in the Urshifu. Of course, the buff-ass bear is one of the scariest Pokemon to deal with, especially, you know, as a Crocodile. But now I'm a dragon, and I'm looking a whole lot more threatening. Now, I am still slow. While I do have, you know, the plus attack and defense, I am going to be slower than this thing. But the scale shot is exactly what we need. And while, you know, with the loaded dice, we're going to be able to hit four to five times, it's not quite going to be enough to take out the Karate Bear. But he is thick as store-bought gravy, and it's definitely going to be able to take at least one at the plus one attack. But with that scale shot, while we do get, you know, the defense drop that comes with, you know, losing some of our scales, it now makes us lighter, which in turn boosts our speed up one stage. Now, I'm in a position where I am faster, and I can outspeed, go for another scale shot, uh, which is exactly the position this Crocodile needs to be set up in, mostly just because they have the threat of the Flutter Mane in the back. So while we're able to knock out arguably the biggest threat on the team, uh, we now get a, another defense drop, but that comes with another speed boost. Now, the reason why I really needed two speed boosts in this matchup is because of that Flutter Mane. If it's going to be a booster energy speed, it would still outspeed me, and being Terra Dragon uh, is obviously bad against the freaking Flutter Mane. So they do decide to go into the Flutter Mane now. Uh, it is not going to pop a booster energy. Does not really matter though, because uh, at plus two, I am indeed faster. And I even got an extra attack boost from the Moxie in an Earthquake is easily able to take care of it. Luckily not Focus Sash. It was most likely something 
uh, like the choice specs. And now the crocodile has officially gotten out of hand. The Moxie's gonna boost us even further. And it brings up the question, what the hell are you gonna do if a crocodile starts snowballing on you like this? The answer is not a whole lot. Meowskarata comes in and they are in fact just gonna go ahead and run because there's nothing you can do uh, against the crocodile here with the stab scale shots paired with the earthquakes. This thing is absolutely insane and super satisfying to get to pull off, especially against a team like that. I've always found myself to be a choice scarf uh, crocodile enjoyer, but scale shot might be my favorite set with the bulk up. So that was a super quick one. And with that, I'm bringing you a second match here where we have another very scary team and we're going to go ahead and see what we can make happen. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so this time my opponent's gonna go ahead and lead off with the Umbreon. We always hate to see it. Umbreon is always just such a defensive monster and this thing is kind of a threat. So I'm still gonna lead off with the James Pond. The Inteleon still is really nice uh, for the potential taunt leads and also just some flip turn pivots. It turns out this thing's gonna go for the protect on turn one. Wants to scout out what I'm gonna do. I just taunt the protect and that's not gonna get us anywhere. Now. The Protect does give us a little bit of information on kind of what this thing is going to do. It's most likely that it's going to be like a Wish Protect with Toxic and just do its general, especially defensive as hell, the annoying Umbreon shit. So they now decide to switch as the Umbreon probably doesn't have much to do to me, as now I'm just going to go right for the flip turn as they bring in the Greninja. So this Ninja Frog is obviously a pretty scary threat here. Now, I don't have a whole lot to deal with it, except for I have an Assault Vest Dragalge, who's kind of the perfect fella for the job. So I bring this thing in, and I know that I can take pretty much any attack this thing wants to throw at me, and uh, probably just fire off the Draco Meteor to do as much damage as possible. Turns out they're gonna go for that Ice Beam, and we really see the special defensive power of this ugly ass seahorse. I'm able to take the Ice Beam amazingly, and then fire off the Draco Meteor, which actually ends up finishing this thing off, which is, Perfect. So with one of the bigger threats out of the way, there's still a lot to deal with. Mainly the freaking Dragapult. Oh, Ghostly Tail over here is going to come in. They also have things like the Ogre Pond in the back. And uh, I do have my work cut out for me. So one thing about Dragapult is always you never know what this thing wants to do. Is it going to be a Dragon Dance physical set? Is it going to be a special set? Is it going to do screens? Is it literally you never know? So I decided to go into the Skarmory just because it's kind of a good middle ground switch in here. Uh, while it likely does have coverage with the flamethrower, I'm going to see what this thing's all about. So it does hit me with the Dragon Darts, which tells me uh, it could be more leaning toward physically or it could just be a mix attacker. But uh, they're actually going to end up bringing in a different metal fella where we look like we would be homies. This thing is, in fact, the absolute enemy. As I'm able to set up a layer of spikes. Uh, I noticed they don't have hazard removal, so the spikes is going to be pretty useful for me here. And I'm just going to go for a second one. I'm really not afraid of whatever this freaking Metagross wants to do to me. So I just go ahead and sprinkle some more Legos on their side, which is perfect. And it turns out this is going to be a Hone Claws set. So it's going to get itself a nice little attack boost, but honestly, Skarmory still... Uh, is in a great spot to absolutely wall the shit out of this Xbox 360. So that is perfect. I decide, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and tell them directly that you are not going to be able to touch me uh, with the Iron Defense. So they go for the Psychic Fangs. Not going to do much. Also take some uh, Rocky Helmet Chip. And at this point, I can just go for a Body Press, get some pretty solid damage here. And uh, they're going to try to fight defense with offense, go for another Hone Claws, which uh, is not quite going to help them out too much because the combination of a Rocky Helmet... Uh, with another body press does take care of it. So the one bad thing about this Skarmory set, and I knew that bringing it into the Dragapult is that of course I cannot touch this thing. I literally cannot touch Ghost with this set as my only form of offense is gonna be that body press, goes right through the guy, and I cannot really do much here. So I decide since this thing did switch out earlier, I figured maybe it doesn't have the fire coverage. It turns out it in fact does. It goes for that flamethrower, doesn't quite knock me out, which is great and allows me to set up a, another layer of spikes, which is gonna be pretty solid to punish some switches here, and uh, I'm feeling pretty good about that. I also now don't really have anything that wants to switch into this. Uh, Dragapult is definitely the scariest mon against me, as it goes for the Dragon Darts, likely expecting the switch into something like the Dragalge, uh, but it turns out Skarmory freaking lives. This thing literally never dies, and that allows me to go for a Roost, brings me back to half, and I'm like, well, damn, as I was considering just sacking this thing off. At this point, I'm like, you know what? I might as well save that. It's actually really nice against things like Ogre Pond. And now I have a tough decision on who I want to switch in here. I decide to go into Mimikyu just because I know that I can take an attack here. 
obviously with that disguise. Um, and then it's probably not going to be able to one-hit KO me depending on what kind of coverage it has on the Mimikyu. As I am going to be around full health here. And I threaten this thing obviously with a, a play rough, something like a Shadow Sneak. And I'm just going to go right for that Shadow Sneak. I, I have no reason really not to. I know that it's not quite going to kill, but at this point some chip on the Dragapult is kind of what I need here. This thing is a damn threat. So, uh, it turns out it's actually going to go for the Phantom Force. And that is not ideal, as it is going to vanish next turn. It's going to be able to attack me here. Uh, I have the option to commit a Terra, but I'm really considering uh, Crocodile in the back does look like I have a potential win con there. So I'm going to try to save it for that or even something else. So uh, the Phantom Force does end up just straight up knocking out the Mimikyu. And while that does kind of suck, I probably could have gotten way better value out of that thing. Uh, it is going to open the door for, I'm like, hey, hold on a second. Old Pickle Rick might have a spot here. Obviously, I bring in the Cacturn and... While I threaten this thing with the Sucker Punch, I decide I'm actually just going to go ahead and commit the Fairy Terra. I'm like, holy shit, can I get the Cacturn to pop off here? I sure as hell am going to try to lead this thing into going for the Dragon Darts. It turns out they're actually just going to switch into the Infernape. And uh, it's not the worst news for me just because now being, you know, Fairy type, I at least should have a decent defensive matchup against uh, the Infernape here, but I also don't really have much coverage against this damn thing. Cacturn definitely needs some more sword stances to be able to do a whole lot. I figure kind of a something like a Seed Bomb paired with a Sucker Punch uh, should be able to do it. So while I get myself at plus two attack, we are feeling nice and sharp, and uh, we are doing our job scaring some crows around. Now, they see me, Terra, and they're like, hold on, I actually can also do the same. They're going to Terra themselves, and they're just going to go pure fire. So as I click the Seed Bomb, I realize, hey, I probably should have clicked Sucker Punch there to at least get some chip, because now, uh, with the Fire Terra, a Raging Fury is more than likely going to be able to take care of me, because Cacturn is built like a damn paper bag, and that is going to take care of me. So, I do go ahead and waste the Terra, so definitely misplay with the Cacturn there, but anytime I see the opening for the Cacturn, you better believe my ass is going to take it. But, uh, as we go down there, I'm finding, you know, this actually isn't that horrible, because I have a pretty solid revenge position uh, with the Inteleon here. Now, Inteleon is going to be able to outspeed the Infernape, a Mach Punch does not kill me, I just go for the Snipe Shot, that is going to take care of it, and I figured, you know, if they wanted to switch into the Umbreon there, uh, they're kind of just rolling the chance for me to get the crit. I have the scope lens paired with the high crit chance and the sniper ability. It's going to get crits a lot of the time, so they just decide to sack off the Infernape, which now leads into a clean switch into Umbreon. Other than the spikes, this thing is sitting at a pretty solid amount of health here. I'm thinking, you know what, I'm going to go for the taunt. I'm really worried about something like a uh, wish being passed into the Dragapult as that feels like their scariest option at this point. Um, but they're just going to, of course, go for the Protect. This thing is just loves to just slow down games and just make them boring as hell. Going to Protect and then eat some leftovers. Buddy's having a fucking picnic over there. Looking like this thing is like three inches tall. Why is Umbreon so tiny? I literally, I have no idea. <laughs> but uh, I figure, you know, I'm not going to be able to do much here, barring some crits. It's probably going to take like two of them. And now I actually see the opening for the Win Con with the Crocodile. I'm going to switch into this thing because... Uh, I realize, you know, Umbreon does not have really much to do to me. So, they actually end up switching themselves, and they're going to end up going into the Ogre Pond. So, as I was looking nice against the Umbreon, against Ogre Pond, I'm feeling like, hey, this is actually not that solid. Without any boost, I'm not going to be able to do too much. And this is exactly the main reason why I decided to save the Skarmory, is because of this bitch over here. Ivy Cudgels are scary, but not when you're a big-ass metal bird. I can bring in the Skarmory, and uh, it just barely touches me. So that is perfect. Doesn't do anything here. And uh, I'm like, okay, if I'm them, I actually end up switching myself into either something like the Umbreon or that Dragapult. They've seen that they uh, they kind of wall me with the Dragapult. So I'm just going to go ahead and double switch myself as they actually end up going back into the Metagross. Metagross comes in, takes a whole bunch of spikes, but it does actually end up living. I'm figuring this is maybe a potential sack switch in here. But now this actually is not too bad because as Crocodile comes in, uh, I know that my kind of win condition here will be getting at least one speed boost via scale shot to be able to outspeed the Dragapult. So that is exactly what I'm gonna go for here. They are gonna end up switching out the Metagross, which is fine because as it comes in next, it's just gonna die. And they decide to go into Ogre Pond who uh, would likely be able to come in on an Earthquake and then outspeed and knock me out. However, 
I'm just gonna go for that scale shot. It would have knocked out the Metagross regardless, and the loaded dice is doing its loaded dice thing. I actually, I believe I end up getting five hits here, which is gonna take care of the Ogre Pond, which kind of put me in a spot where I was like, wait, was that bad? I would have liked to get another speed boost just in case, but then I realized at plus one speed, Crocodile is actually gonna be in a position to outspeed the Dragapult, and that's exactly what we need. So I get that speed boost from the scale shot, also gonna get that Moxie at the same time, and now, all of a sudden, Crocodile is the scariest Mon in the damn game here. So, they're gonna end up bringing in the Umbreon, who does take some considerable chip from those spikes, and I also know that the reason why setting up Crocodile in this position is great is because, while Umbreon may be their only answer, it also does not have any offensive uh, presence against the Crocodile. So, they're just gonna go for the Protect here, uh, likely just to get another turn of leftovers. And while I am at plus one attack, it's still, this thing is just bulky as shit, does not matter how this thing is built, it's just built different. It's gonna be able to take uh, in, in a plus one earthquake here. So I'm just gonna go for that as, again, this thing doesn't have much that it can do uh, to knock me out here. It is barely able to hang on uh, to, from the earthquake there, but then allows them to go for the toxic, which is absolutely amazing because being toxic really does not scare me that much. I, I'm in a position where it's gonna take a lot of turns for Crocodile to be chipped uh, from that toxic, and I'm feeling like I can grab myself that late game sweep. Honestly, Crocodile is one of my favorite late game sweepers. Regardless of what set you're using, if it's Scarf or if it's the Scale Shot, this thing always finds its, itself a spot with that Moxie later on in a game. So they're just gonna go for another Protect here, just to stall out, you know, another, <laughs> another turn of that toxic damage. But that is obviously still fine. It's always great to put Umbreon's in a position where they it can't really do anything offensively, which seems like the case a lot of the time. It's always a pretty good mon to be able to at least set up something against. So I take some chip from that Toxic, but at this point, I do not need another speed boost from the Scale Shot. I'm just going to click the Earthquake, and uh, that is going to take care of the Umbreon. So they're down to two Pokemon left, one of them being the uh, Metagross, who just dies to the Spikes. Bandit, meanwhile, is just going to go ahead and grab himself another Attack Boost, which is uh, absolutely amazing. So... Uh, the Dragapult is their win condition here, and that is a, definitely a Mon that can win the game for them if I didn't have the Scale Shot boost. They're going to go into the Dragapult, barely hang on to the Spikes chip, and at this point, all I've got to do is just go ahead and outrun one of the fastest damn ghosts in the game, which of course I can, go for that Earthquake, and that is going to finish off the Dragapult. So playing around that Pult was kind of uh, my only way of winning this match, and uh, the Scale Shot does exactly what it needs to do. I grab myself an extra Moxie, just as salt in the wound as their final Pokemon, the Metagross, is going to be able to come in here and be like, hey, what's going on over here? I'm just going to, and I am dead. That is just going to be the end of the match, <laughs> and um, that's going to do it. Thank you guys very much for watching. Crocodile is the absolute goat, and uh, I do appreciate all the support on the vids lately. Thank you guys very much. I'll catch you next time. Peace out.